brought together academics, educators, learners, and leaders in tech and AI to explore the intersections, opportunities, challenges between artificial intelligence and a multilingual world. One thing that just absolutely delighted me was how well everyone got on together and how well we understood each other. We understood the various complexities and problems that we're facing when we're dealing with language. Another thing that really did impress me was our shared interests. We feel that really the research in this area is very much at the beginning and that it's most important to um, include questions such as benefits to creativity, benefits to identity formation, identity expression in the whole field of AI in languages. We feel that this is something that is central to our mission in creative multilingualism and that this conference will give us some very important ways of exploring what is relevant for further research. Only about 2% of the world's languages are fully supported by digital technology. So for most people, um, your phone might auto-correct you uh, to another language because it doesn't recognize your own. Most of the uh, AI language tech that currently exists, uh, predictive text for instance, are for writing systems which are designed to transliterate sound, not movement, and um, speech recognition, which is audio. And so sign languages and conversely sign language speakers, deaf communities are, are left out of this. And so I think visual recognition is the most potentially inclusive um, technology for, for AI and language. A lot of the technology for language learning that's come out so far has just perpetuated the one-size-fits-all approach to language learning, um, but the, the horizon is being able to take modularized content with learning analytics and assessment data and create personalized learning and custom learning paths that are specific to the needs and the skill level of the individual. And once we can do that, we can replicate the uh, tutoring and apprentice approach for language learning, which will lead to dramatically improved outcomes. People are connected. People can use keyboards and the writing systems to express things that um, were normally restricted to hand operations. And people couldn't do that beyond their local communities. But it's also a, a, a danger because People are more engaged in the wider culture, and the wider culture can easily overwhelm people. Um, as people compare their language and cultures with the larger communities, they may say, oh, this, isn't, this isn't important compared to it. So th the ability to use their languages and um, use the modern tools can enhance their well-being and sense that what they're doing is important, but there are challenges with that too. One of the most important things is getting people in the UK and the US to take language. And right now, artificial intelligence is threatening jobs all over the world. However, the jobs it doesn't threat are human to human interactions, like in health, uh, health care, for instance, and in, and in travel assistance and so on. So in fact, it's threat of uh, to employment is actually a boon to marketing language as an interpersonal skill. It's not just a matter of words, it's not just a matter of grammar, it's people using gesture, using their voices, interacting. And so there's a lot of potential for artificial intelligence to introduce into the classroom that kind of interactive, imaginative, conversational element. And also to make it fun, you know, to learn language through playing games and, and, and all that kind of thing. The interactions of human beings cannot be replicated by Google Translate. It, there's a text between every, every interaction in Google Translate. It goes from speech to text to speech, or text to speech to text, whatever it is. But the human interaction, if you learn a language, you talk to a human being, you understand the emotions of a human being, and, and you get the whole context and so on, which AI can't do. Translating web pages, documents, you know, sure, you can get the gist of the meaning. Again, that's what machine can do. And as a human person, you get to focus on the fun of learning language. With that, uh, the joy of interacting with foreign culture, people communicating, and deriving some insights out of how different languages and different cultures sort of interact with each other. 
And also with that kind of knowledge, you can even deepen your own understanding of your own language. I think people should not be afraid of being replaced, especially teachers. I think they should be excited about how these technologies will help their students, uh, how it's going to facilitate their job as teachers in, in giving feedback on, on speaking. It'll help students understand texts, uh, words that they don't understand. They can instantly find out the meaning. I think people should see it as a great opportunity, a great way to advance learning, an even better way to motivate uh, people to learn more about language and culture. As a prime example of artificial intelligence, uh, a few years ago I had an encounter with a self-driving car myself, where I made a Pittsburgh left in front of one. And a Pittsburgh left means you make a left in front of oncoming traffic as soon as the light uh, becomes green. And I asked myself a question, what if I stopped? And what would have happened? Because obviously, self-driving car knows the rules of the road. And one of them is, when you see an object, you stop. We would be in a standoff all day. And that makes me think about you know, the fact that there are limitations. I think, for, for example, self-driving cars know very well the rules of the road. But then what about the language of driving? The language of driving in Pittsburgh? language of driving in Morocco, the social aspect of driving, which is very complex. The, the waving, the smiling, uh, people waving you in, and, and all of that, all, all of those things. One interesting task we've used within the project that I lead with, with learners in schools is showing them how Google Translate works with particular aspects of a language, so in this case, German, and looking at how Google Translate translates a certain term and then about what it really means and helping them to think about, OK, so Google Translate can't actually get to the heart of what this word means. Google Translate is useful, but it has quite a, a limited role. And I think the challenge for teachers is to understand that actually rather than telling learners, oh, no, don't use Google Translate, their role is to show learners how they can use it in the best possible way to support their language learning. There are a lot of really good reasons to learn another language. It makes your brain stronger. You know, it's, there's ample evidence now, a generation of research on the benefits of bilingualism, which their cognitive educational um, benefits of bilingualism, career benefits of bilingualism. That sounds very instrumental, right? And, and at some point you want, if you've got a kid in college, you want that kid to take an instrumental view of the world and maybe figure out how to get a job. Um, learning a language will help you do that. But um, throughout one's life, it turns out that if, if you're a bilingual adult and you use your language at least once a week, the average age of the onset of the symptoms of dementia is delayed by about four years. And this has been confirmed and replicated in multiple studies. Now, the degree of bilingualism matters and how much you use it, and, you know, but, but overall, there are these benefits that nobody really foresaw in being bilingual. Not only do I, as a person, learn the language, I learn the culture, and I learn about myself. Uh, it changes how I function as a human being for the better. So learning a language just opens up different worlds in, a, in many psychological ways, in academic ways, and in basic human interactions. For one reason or another, people are moving around in large numbers, um, as are industries and economies um, that are inextricably interconnected with each other. That's not going to stop. And we need to be able to communicate with each other, interact with each other. Um, in an empathetic way uh, and come and go in other societies and communities and not blunder in with our ways of thinking. And uh, I think cultural proficiency ties in with linguistic proficiency, with language proficiency. So I think it's very important in terms of being successful in the in increasingly flattened world economy. At Duolingo, there are 25 different languages spoken among the employees. We're a very international organization. So being able to sit down at lunch with somebody and communicate in their language rather than my language is both a fun challenge and a puzzle for me and a way to connect with that person at a level that I wouldn't be able to if we just had a business conversation, you know, in English. 
There is no downside to learning a language. I've never heard anyone ever say they regretted learning a language, and I think that it can only benefit you and your contribution to being a global citizen. A lot that stops us from learning is our own insecurities, and I think AI is teaching us about our, those insecurities and like removing them systemically. I wish I could tell people to go to things like this, even if it has nothing to do with what they do from day to day.